Okay, we're about ready to go live. Okay. This is gonna be fun, everybody. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you don't know, we love to do create talks. We love to talk about what God is doing and how He's moving. And so at in create talks, our whole aim is to help inspire you to find out what you have been created to be and then to release you into that. So we're going to have fun tonight. And so I just wanted to like introduce our wonderful Nathan Aboko. And Nathan, share about what you're doing currently. And you are uh, in the third level with me in Create Academy, but share a little bit about what you're up to. Yeah, so yes, I'm in the third level. And so my focus is really on taking uh, art and prophecy outside of the walls of the church and into the marketplace, and then having that cross pollinating go back and forth. Um, and the big thing that I'm really doing is trying to communicate God to people who don't yet know the story of Christ and don't have the language to understand um, the normal uh, the things of Christ that we do. Uh, so what I've been doing is I'm developing this type of light sculpture and uh, light art and performance that uh, engages people on a level of um, really just simple things to do with light and color that can speak to people about God and his goodness and the life that we have, uh, the vibrancy of that. I love it. And uh, and talk about like when, I mean, because this is so crazy. So in our, our second level, we do a personal project. Mm. And tell about like how you got this inspiration to do this, this light show. Tell a little bit about that story, because yeah. it's such a great story for all of you that are creative to know that you can go and you can start to ask Holy Spirit for these creative ideas to awaken culture. So share about that. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I, I've been uh, creating uh, prophetic art in the past, uh, usually through pastel. Um, I also do a lot of different things like video and uh, drama and so on. Um, but I do a lot of stuff um, for commission and for, for work for people. And I was asking God, you know, what is it that you want me to bring? Uh, what can I do to use the skills and talents you've given me? In particular, how can I reach people who don't know? who don't know you how can I reach people in that way and I've since I was a child I've had this whole desire to transform culture um originally I thought it was going to be through academics and I studied a lot that way um but God has brought me back around to the arts and it just opens doors isn't it the arts and it just touches people in ways that you don't it's hard to do with uh with uh, other other ways so I was asking God and um I was thinking of ideas and then I thought um this this man had created something uh, Stephen Knapp is an artist an American artist and uh he created this uh, stuff with dichroic glass and light. I thought that was fantastic. It's got such potential. Um, so I started to develop it. I started to look into it. It's taken me about two years um, to really look into it and work it through. And with the support of the community and sharing it, um, we thought actually using my voice and uh, the performance side of things that I do has been really useful. So we've developed it now into this bit where it's more for show and I move the pieces and I talk through the process and I declare. And it's, it's a really interesting thing, but it, I, I don't think I would have developed it without the uh, the nudge to do it for the project, if I'm honest. Yeah, it, it's like it's like it's so cool how God does it, how we have um, a level of of just allowing Holy Spirit to move because we want to uh, we want to fulfill our call and your voice and what God has for you as a prophetic voice too. In the UK, God has just wired you to do this, and it's so fun to watch. And so when we did this recent trip to the UK. And uh, Randy, I just haven't gotten any text. So Randy, if you are on this call, if you could text me, let me know that you're on. That would be great. Um, but it was interesting because we went to like, we well, we had three or four different events and mm. you were able to showcase this event, this light show in both uh, St. Helens and in London. And three people got got saved when we were, were in London, which is so cool from the light mm. show. They got gave their lives to Christ. And then we also did it for children mm. and then we did it for, uh, it was a glass museum where we were doing a Valentine day show. And so we showed it to the public there and people were so intrigued by that. It was such an incredible time. I mm. absolutely loved it. It was incredible. Um, so anyway, but I wanted people to hear, like, if you, if you let us know where you're from, what you want to learn from Nathan uh, give us a show of hands and Randy, just text me that you're there. That'd be amazing. But what I'd like to do right now is, um, is dive into like, what, what does this mean? It's like, 
There's so many times when we have these nudges, like what you talked about, and we kind of do nothing with them. Mm. Uh, we kind of like, you know, my create to be free and what I did to really help people, the refugees and to help different people that are marginalized and created this whole course. It was a nudge, but nobody said, Teresa, you have to do this. But there was something that the Holy Spirit was prompting me in. And now create to be free. That course has gone around the world. And now we're going to certify people to teach it. But in that course of my life, that so was a part of my calling. And so I think that what we want to do today is talk about, you know, opening up hearts. What do we do? How do we create life that opens up and heals people's hearts? Like second Corinthians five is all about this amazing world of reconciling man back to God. And this is how it happened. I, I love it. It's just so powerful. Um, so one of the things I want to talk to you about is like, show, tell me some testimonies because we were out there with the children. We were out mm -hmm. there in different places. So share some testimonies about what God did when we were in the UK um, on that trip. I, I, I want people to hear the good news. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, absolutely. So as you said, uh, three people gave their lives to Christ after after watching, and uh, that was fantastic. I mean, that's really obviously done something in their in their life. And another lady was able to re rededicate her life to Christ, and that story actually is repeated quite a few times in different places that people have been able to make some connections to God and the way that they understand His grace and His nature um, through seeing the performance and seeing the way the light operates on the on the pieces um, they wouldn't normally make. And several people, several adults have come up to me and said that. And then several kids have come up as well. And when we were in the glass museum, uh, Teresa had this great idea of saying, would the kids like to interact with the pieces? And so I invited them up and uh, they chose a piece, uh, a place where they were in reference to the lights. Are they close? Were they far? What kind of shape are they? And through that time, I was able to speak into the light, to call out what God is saying about them through where they were in that place. And they all left uh, with, you know, the, you know, God speaking to them, which I think was a, a fantastic thing to do. Um, I think so too. I, I yeah. there was one woman that uh, was touched that was part of a mom to one of the team members, and she mm. really was so. Um, she wasn't close to the Lord, and she came up to me and she goes, "You know, I feel like I'm far away from the light." And it was so powerful because she was able to not only share her story but then create a piece of art with one of our team, Randy, during that time, uh, which was so incredible, all the all the different things that happened. We do have some shout outs. I'm gonna go ahead and woohoo here and tell you these shout outs we have. Oh my gosh, we have Jacqueline, welcome. Krista, Krista will be with us in uh, Hope Fest OC, October, uh, September, um, April 1st. Uh, Helene, he Heli, you are on. We love you, Heli was part of the team. Uh, the Reverend Parve Moshi is on. So glad. Uh, Delia is on. Steve Dow. Welcome, Steve Dow. And Chris Oldham. Chris Oldham, share a testimony in there about healings that you saw. Chris was a part of our team in the UK and what you saw from the light show too. So any questions you have for our wonderful uh, Nathan, please put that in the chat, but I'm sure that you guys would like to see this light show. The buildup is dramatic, right? Um, so Nathan, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to actually demonstrate the light show to you now. And so again, please share this with other people because other people need to see this as well. So go ahead, Nathan, and let's see it. Okay. I'm just going to change the settings here. It's a little bit of future. There we go. So what a mystery is life, such potential, such opportunity. But what is that life without light? To give illumination, to give shape, to give form, to give some definition, to create a stage for all the wonders that can happen. But what is this life, with this life without someone to experience it? 
someone who can turn and experience that light and shine out its colors throughout. Look how it moves and how it changes depending on where it goes. But what is that life without another to share it? A different shape, different colors, a different style of pattern, a dance that they can make together as they move and twirl and see how their light merges and create new colors, new shapes. And to think about this is that that kind of color, that kind of vibrance is so attractive that more people will be attracted. They multiply. There's another. New colors and another. And you start to gain this wonderful dance of light and color, different people affecting one another, all under the one light. But of course, in life, sadly, it's not always so easy to stay so connected. And unfortunately, disagreements, bitterness, misunderstanding and miscommunication can separate us from one another. And as they do, they cause us to turn away from one another, diminishing their colors, diminishing their light until only their shadows seem to be remaining. What once was a great dance becomes something of a very solo and isolated time of pain and sadness. And sadly, that too becomes attractive and others will join. But not as before where they affect one another and create their dance together. No, this time they join to be separate. This time they join in opposition. This time they join and they become the very different definition of the other. And what was meant to be joyful becomes somber, becomes sad. It's as if the light itself becomes blocked away. It's as if there is no way back. And what's left becomes a dividing line, a line to be feared, to be avoided. But what if there was a way to remember? What if there was a way to find out if the light is still available? If the light still shines? What if there was a way to catch a glimpse of the brilliance that we had as we used to dance beneath the light. The brilliance that we might be able to have once more. Would that glimpse be enough? Enough for someone to check, to take a step, to move themselves into the light and see if it still shines, and it does. And as they move, they reach out to another and that one reaches out to another and another. And pretty soon, those impossible barriers start to disappear. And where there was just darkness before, they realize that the light never disappeared. The light still shines. And the opportunity to come and dance beneath it is still there. The light and the dance and the connection is what we're made for. And all it takes is the courage to check that the light still shines and the darkness will never overcome it.
Woo! Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Wow, wow, wow. If you liked it, please let us know. We have more people joining too. We have, um, gosh, Don Treader, Diane Lawton, Christine Weber, offer just so many others. It's just so incredible to see what God is doing. If you love that, please let us know how that spoke to you and what God was saying. I love this. Um, you know, part of part of the beauty of this narrative and what you just shared is like there has been so many oppositions that we have faced in every culture because of the pandemic and because of what's happening with governmental uh, changes and and mm. people coming back to normal and and there's so many different things um that are happening but this type of expression can change the cultures around us like Zechariah 118 through 20 God, God wants to raise up the creatives these craftsmen that will come to terrify the enemy and throw down these divisions that have happened and this is one of those tools which I love it's so amazing but um but also you are a prophetic voice so please let us know what you love about that but the question I have for you as a creative and as a kingdom artist and as a prophetic, because again, where this is headed, you shared this with the whole dramatic society where you live. And now I think it's going to get into a secular show is right. Uh, uh, theater, right? Yeah. We're looking at it. Yeah. We're looking at the possibility. Um, which is so cool. Come on. This is where it needs to be. Um, so what do you feel God wants to do through kingdom creatives? That will mm. impact culture and church mount and the church mountain. What what do you think he's doing? And we see this a lot in Create Academy. But share share some things about what you're sensing in your spirit. Yeah, I think there's a real um, a real need a real need for this. Um, so, I mean, I see things in images. So uh, when I'm praying, I see um, people sort of um, coming out of the ground. So it's almost like creativity. The way God's creative spirit within us, God's creative nature within us has been sort of um hidden and it's in the ground it's a current in the ground but it feels like we're coming out of the ground and i see like people like they're carrying mirrors and it's like they're showing a beam of light together demonstrating the the power and the the love and the joy and the the vibrancy of god across what they're showing is they're reflecting the invisible nature of god to a world in a way that they can understand and see and i just see that the the arts mountain this 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 mountain of culture and arts and I just think it can be a beacon, like a volcano of light, that when we when we just engage with God and let him speak through us, let him um, just, I mean, he created every single grass to be different, <laughs> every single blade yes, of grass to be different, yes. every single feather on a bird to be different. I mean, yeah. the thoughts that we could have are incredible if we just allow him to do so. We don't have to be boxed in. We just need to see what he wants to do. And I think there are philosophies of creating that we can create. Uh, to be uncovered, that when people engage with them, they will start to lead people to Christ. It will just start to shift culture and redirect back into the trajectory that God has, because it's his trajectory. He has one yeah. for every nation. And I just believe that arts can demonstrate the invisible God and the power and the life of him in a way that other things can't. And it's so attractive, but it's just so freeing because it's who we're meant to be. And when we yeah. recognize that, we just think, yeah, we'll we'll see so much more freedom in the saints of the, and I, I say people of christ you know because it's like you know it's within the church walls and it's without the church walls you know it's like we we just we're with the body of christ <laughs> and yes. we're working <laughs> so yeah. yeah i i love that i mean part of that is is like and again this is very important that you all hear this it's like there's something about people trying to uh wear saul's armor at, at like reaching out through an old system, an old way of thinking. And, you know, it, it's like for Nathan to not perceive that this is from the Holy Spirit and not be given permission to create something like this for others to see. It's like, it's, that would be so terrible if he thought that he had to reach out to people by a track that somebody created 20 years ago. It's like, no, we're, we're supposed to create stuff that brings life because we know the culture. And I love how you added in the different components of the, the way that the culture is separating one from another and how that, that makes the light go away. There's such incredible 
like language and creativity involved in the story, the narration about what you do. And we want to set you free. We want you to be able to create things that that you can uh, actually see and perceive that will change people both in the church and uh, outside the walls of the church. This is what we're we're called to be. And I love that voice. I, I love I love what you said about there's this rumbling. There's this uh, thing underneath the ground that's being uncorked and people are starting to see it. I, I have a couple other testimonies. Steve Dow says, uh, what is a good starting place with influencing culture? Great question, Steve. So what do you think? What is it? What is a starting point for influencing culture that you had, Nathan? Yeah, so for me, I look, if I look back at um, the places that God had put me and the experiences that he's given me, and I realized that actually um, God's been placed me into, um, so he's given me this voice and these talents of the arts, uh, but then he placed me in a place where I can actually try and express them and have a bit of thoughts think okay well how can I now connect to people who don't know this um but I also work in other systems so I work in um church governmental systems for instance I, I'm part of my uh, Church of England structures of governance as well um and these give me the opportunity to speak into different places and to learn from different places so I look back at my life and I said well, where has God placed me what are the experiences that he's highlighted to me and I wrote those out actually and I drew a picture about them and then I started to work from there so yeah, I would say start by looking. That is so good. I love what you just shared. I think part of it is, uh, Steve, and everybody listening is start with you. Um, start with what you can do today. Start with like whether that's creating. I know that Steve, you do photos. Whether it's giving a photo to the person that's at the checkout line where you're at, or whether it's to prophesy over somebody. You you start with what you have, and then your influence just grows. Um. Like for this painting right here, we're doing the Hope Fest and that's going to be on April the 1st. And that's where we're going down to the Honda Center in Irvine, Southern California, which seats like, I don't know, 50,000 people. And uh, I'm painting with two other muralists and another incredible artist on stage for three hours uh, from 6 to 9.30. Um, and it's all about just a crusade of bringing people to Jesus and these kinds of paintings will lead people into encounters with God, just like the light show. And so again, this is all part of Steve and people knowing, like it started with me just saying yes to somebody that I would meet in the store. It, so it, it can start small and then that yes continually grows and getting involved in Create Academy, getting involved in things. I know Chris Oldham shared a testimony and you remember this, Nathan, we were on our, we had our day off on Monday when we were in the UK and we went to Liverpool, which was about 20 minutes away from St. Helens on the train. And so, you know, we're sitting and we were delayed a couple hours. So we went to get lunch back on the train and there's this woman opposite me and Chris. And so I struck up a conversation, found out who she was meeting at, in Liverpool and, and just about just the things that were going on that caused her to feel um, agitated and have anxiety about meeting her friends and so I gave her, I think I gave her a photo and just really reached out to her. And then I asked if she needed any healing. And she said she had an eye problem where she had glaucoma and she couldn't see out of one of her eyes. And so I said, well, would you mind if we just prayed for you? And so we did. And she started to see out of that eye. And it was just so Probably. cool, wasn't it, Chris? It was one of those things of what we're talking about. Yeah. It's, and Steve, we're just bringing the light, whatever opportunity arises, we can ask Holy Spirit and he can creatively bless people around us. I, I just love this. This is so cool. Um, but I wanted you also to share some testimonies about this trip. I know that you love to flag and you love to do other creative expressions and share about what happened when you were flagging and what happened to that woman that uh, that had problems with her. I think it was it wasn't her her feet or was it her feet? yeah it was uh Kelly Sendons I think yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so what happened mm. so yeah so um she asked for healing so I, I said okay well let me dance over with flags and I was just dancing over flags and uh declaring and speaking in tongues and just uh, asking God to heal her and uh after a while she said I think I just want to jump now she had had a problem with her Achilles tendons for a long time uh I think she used to be trained um in dance 
uh, and she hadn't danced for a long time because of this pain. And so uh, she said she feels like she wants to jump a little. So I said, yeah, go ahead. And so she started jumping a little, just jumping a little, and so how's it feeling? So it's feeling a bit better. So I carried on dancing, and then eventually started just jumping really high. And then she said, yeah, I think it's done. I think it's ready. So I was like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing, you know, just through, was, you know, just yeah. running to God, right? <laughs> yeah, glory to God, yeah. right? We saw a bunch yeah. of people get healed in uh, mm. Arizona. I was just speaking in Arizona in Payson. Mm. And we saw the same thing. So many people, it's just that risk. Uh, somebody asked this question and I love this question. Um, don't know who it's from. So make sure that you let us know. Um, we all get ideas, but don't all act on them. What propelled you to follow through and create this? Good mm -hmm. question. That's a good question. Yeah. I think somebody had been building in my heart for a while that I really needed to do something uh, uh, different that was going to that was going to touch people. I mean, like I said, this call I've been building and it's like, I don't think I'm fully realizing yet. I really need to do something. Um, yes. And then all the teacher of Creative Academy actually was about releasing into culture and releasing through art. And that sort of collided, I think, at that moment in time. I was like, well, let's let's give this, let's just try it. And it wasn't easy. I have to say there were times when I was like, I was I was going to stop because I thought, I didn't think anyone's going to get this. So I thought, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to work. And it's a difficult thing to do because you're, creating stuff for the first time that's not really there's not really much precedent for it so it wasn't it wasn't easy but um once I had the courage to share it with some people and I saw the responses and people encouraged me uh, my small group leader at the time encouraged me quite a bit and um then I shared it as part of the project that solidified in me okay well I've got to I've got to keep going with this this is going to help so I have a bent to maybe isolate myself. That's one of the things that I need to watch out for. And if things are difficult, I'll isolate myself really easily. And then that's where things can die, I think, for me. So not doing that and having just a little bit of courage to share it with um, trusted friends um, makes a huge difference. Uh, and then you'll see where God is resting. Yeah, I I agree with you. I, I feel like I feel like this thing that is it's it's like this. It's like we we have to realize you know, what you're talking about is so profound. Like when, when you first started doing this, this light show, and it was just for a personal project and create Academy. And it, it was, it was, you were fleshing it out. You were having to figure out what does this look like, figuring out the script, the things that would be in back of it. And, you know, Nathan has a dramatic background as well, but in that process, like you have to have this ability for everybody here to, to know, like, you have to have a team of people that support you in that. Like we saw everybody's personal project and that was an impetus for him to work on something. And he had this gift, he had this curiosity and he said, Hmm, what if this happened? What if that happened? But it's that thing of co-creating with God that I wanted to talk about right now. It's like, there's something that you have, whether it's doing an art piece like this one back here, or or whether it's doing music or whether it's doing flagging or or whether it's for a business or whether it's for a creative idea for witnessing i mean it doesn't matter but whatever it is you have to test it out <laughs> isn't that right nathan That's you right. Have to, yeah. it's like if so many creatives and people that are in this process they keep everything to themselves they never show their poetry they never show their art or their um, drama or their or dance or whatever it is. And so we'll never know the impact or the effect of that. I mean, can you imagine if, if um, like Jared Tolkien never ever showed anybody the Chronicles of Narnia or if Jared Tolkien never shared about um, his books and what he wrote with the Lord of the Rings, like that's all a part of the process is trust. And so I just want to give you courage to do something and then share it, share it, join Create Academy or go to my Facebook lives at 9 a.m. on Tuesdays where we talk about art, dance, music and writing. Um, we'll have Randy put that in the chat right now, like find out what you have and get around other creatives that supernaturally know that creativity is from God and then it's meant for a purpose and then start to grow because God is wanting to give these ideas. This rumbling that you're talking about is so vital, Nathan, for where we're headed. We, we have to know that it's not up to somebody else. 
And, you know, it's interesting because everybody, like, you need to understand, like, God's not just breathing on what happened before, but he's breathing on the now word that the creatives have. He's breathing on what you carry for your, for, for who the people that you are to reach. And that's what we need to, to really pray for in just a second. But uh, I have another question for you, Nathan. Um, you know, you carry a prophetic voice for the kingdom. What do you uh, see God is going to do as kingdom creatives arise? What do you see in the future? If everybody decided <laughs> to really ignite their creative passion and to start to grow together in community, what what do you think is going to happen? I just think... <laughs> I mean, I think just nations will be completely transformed by it. I don't think it's something that can stay within the church entirely at all. It's, you know, I just think the idea of the body working together will be there because I think people will be, I mean, imagine like, you know, even outside of the art, you have people who are having creative solutions, you know, different ways of interacting with people, different ways of blending then prophetic speech, prophetic acts, along with the process of actually trying to work something out, you know, bringing God right into the midst of everything and that being the way to work would be a completely different thing. I mean, it would just transform the way that we think of living. You know, it's, I just think it's a huge thing. And I just think it's almost like I, I had this um, this vision actually that, you know, like the amount of creativity is like, you know, it can transform into a place where it's God's home, where he sets foot. And it's like, when we create with the kingdom, we create with God, with his spirit, it's like it creates a landing place for God's spirit and for him to rest and for him to be and to flourish through the world. So I think, you know, nations will be blessed in a huge way and transformed and you'll just see yeah but without it i think <laughs> I, I just i can't i can't imagine it not happening you know because i just yeah. think that that's, that's what god is doing yeah i agree with you 100 percent. I, I feel like i i have this word and we're going to go after some words of knowledge right now uh which i love and oh this is what dawn said this is inspiring me to express my hope through jesus the light in my own world in my own way. Come on. I love that. That is so cool. Thank you, Robin, for sharing. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that I felt as we right now is, is I feel like there's there's this thing that I I saw this rumbling, like you talked about this yeah. understanding that when we go through times in our lives, when we see a wrong, whether it's like things that might be for the sex slave trade victims, it might be for uh, things that we see in our culture that are not, not, not according to God's plan, et cetera. One of the things that we can do is we can grumble. I mean, we can just say, oh, but God wants to give us a creative solution to bring hope and light to that situation. And what if the creative, so I saw the creatives not, not in a sense, stopping with the pain or the injustice but actually following through to a greater revelation so that people mm. understand who they are i mean i think about what william wilberforce did and how um you know they they were telling him uh newton was saying you need to continue on and i i love how he was in that space of knowing oh, i want to preach but i also want to be in parliament i want to change that thing and and Wesley on his deathbed said, do not go into the, um, do not go into pastoring. You are called to use your voice to awaken uh, uh, all the people to the injustice of slavery. And, and I looked at that and I go, you know, that's the thing we need to do what God is calling us to change culture. And whether it's with eloquence, whether it's with persuasion, whether it's with um, prophetic acts, whether that's with drama, dance, fashion, writing, whatever it is. But guys, let's not act like we're we're imprisoned by other by other things that are happening when we hold the voice of Jesus mm -hmm. within us. So I I just feel like there's going to be a move of God that will not be stopped because of the love of God that will permeate culture and the creatives will be awakened to once again tell the right narrative. Like your the light show tells the right narrative. That's that's what I believe. But I had a word of knowledge for. Uh, for people that have have gone into places where they felt like there was just too much um, oppression upon the people, depression, or things going on. Maybe that's in your own life. And I feel like the Lord said, no, let the light come. Let the light of God shine 
let him shine through your small circuits and let him reveal to you creative ways that you can make a difference today. It's not about, you know, it's up to God to change these, these major things that are going on, but it's up to us to walk out what we are called to be. I mean, nobody would be healed unless the disciples said, okay, game on, I'm going out. I'm going to follow what Jesus said. Nothing would have happened in the same way. Some of you are going to get these ideas like what Nathan did and you just need to plant yourself in the word, plant yourself in the presence and just start to create and in community. So I just saw people that had felt like the, this, the situations around them were too much. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to give you a voice. I'm going to give you the chance to see what I can do through you. So I got that. But Nathan, did you have any words for people? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think again with that with the image of sort of coming out of the ground and coming and being um, and lifting them, it's like it's literally a matter of just taking the thing that you have, whatever it is that God's given you, and just lifting it before Him and just holding it up and yes. showing it. And it's a small thing, but you know when God puts His His light on it, it just completely transforms the the area, you know. Yes. And that's what's happening here. It's like it's just one piece. And it just allows for someone else to catch that and then someone else to catch that. And then together, it creates something magnificent. Um, but your people need to be part of it. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. I love this, guys. I mean, mm -hmm. part of what we want to do right now is just breathe upon the, the ideas that you're getting right now. Uh, we, as prophetic voices over your life, we want to breathe into the, the lies that have kept you from feeling like you had nothing to give or you, what, who am I to do that? And God is breaking that off. And he's saying, if I use Gideon, I can use you. If I, he's just beginning to show you that, that what you have and your heart is starting to be uplifted. And I break off the fear of failure. I break that off. I cancel that perfectionism. I say, go. And I put in the perfect love that passes understanding and that the light is shining on you. And that there's others around you that th they'll catch fire and they'll start to see that light too. And then Nathan, go ahead and you impart too. Yeah, I just want to impart uh, that courage and humility and to know that actually both of them work together. That you can, you're humble because you know that it's God's work that uh, lays the path ahead of you. But then you've got to be courageous to take that step and go forward. And so I want to impart that curiosity and the desire to follow what God is doing and have the courage to do something that even that you're not sure where it's going to lead. Um, but yeah, courage, humility, and then for that to be drenched in the love of Christ, drenched in his compassion for his world and for his people. Um, it's not a pursuit of greatness in a sense, it's a pursuit of heart. And it's God's pursuit uh, of your heart. Wow. Yeah, I agree. That's so good. So Holy Spirit, come. We um we ask for that light that Nathan shared, that light to shine into our lives. Lord, we thank you for that. You are the light of the world that without you, we sit in darkness. And I just pray for your light to shine into everyone's heart and mind and that God, you would do things in their spirit, man, to awaken uh, incredible ideas that will spark changes in the people around them and bring them hope and healing. So Father, I bless that in Jesus name. Amen. Woo! This is so good guys. Share this. If you, if you know of people that need the light, uh, please share this with you. We'll let, we'll find out from Nathan what happens with this theater and potentially him showcasing it that there, but share this so that people get to see the light show too. And thanks again, uh, Nathan, for joining. Blessings from the UK. For the, uh, bless everybody in the UK. Bless Susan and stuff. And yeah. um, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.